Hey there and welcome back to Red Sparks Crypto Blog for your Cardano and Crypto news and analysis. Today I'm going to be covering a simple explanation of the Jed stablecoin. I've seen a lot of confusion out there on Twitter and Reddit about Jed and how it would function, uh, so I thought I'd try and clear things up. Now I feel like I have a good grasp of Jed, but I by no means am an expert, so if you spot any errors or inaccuracies, then please leave a comment down below. Those of you who have used DEXs will be familiar with the concept of a liquidity pool. So I'm going to start off by making a bold claim that JED is just like a liquidity pool in which one side, the left hand side of this diagram, is forced to buy and sell JED at a fixed price. And we'll see what I mean by that in just a second, but just keep that in mind. Okay, so here we have two parties. On the left hand side, we have uh, investors looking to fund the JED contract. So you can think of them as actually as liquidity providers. And then on the right hand side, you've got ordinary people like you and me who want to swap, swap our ADA and get a JED stablecoin in return. Now, initially, Coty has said that the left hand side would only be available to accredited investors, i.e. rich people. Um, but they subsequently backed away from that and recently announced that anybody can be a liquidity provider, just like anybody can be on the right hand side and be a uh, stablecoin holder. Um, so you can take any side of this transaction, but for the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to refer to the left hand side as the liquidity providers and the right hand side as stablecoin holders, which are more likely to be people like you and me. Now, JED is a stable coin, and we'll come on to what that means in just a second. But let's just start off with how this contract is initially funded. So you've got your liquidity providers on the left hand side, and they throw in ADA into the JED contract. And in return for throwing in ADA, they get back a Shen token. Now, this isn't the official logo for the Shen token. I don't think there is one. But Shen always reminds me of Shenron, the legendary dragon from Dragon Ball Z. So I'm just using that as a logo here. Now, Shen represents a claim on a portion of what's in the Jed contract. So it's a little bit like being a shareholder. You get to claim a certain percentage of what's in the Jed contract. And the more Shen tokens that are given out, i.e. the more liquidity providers are coming in, the more the value of your individual Shen token is diluted. So you get a smaller share of the Jed pie, so to speak. Now, there are mechanisms in place to control that. But given that I want to keep this video simple, I'm not going to go into that. OK, on the right hand side, you have your stablecoin holders. So, so these are people that hold ADA, but they actually want to trade it for a stablecoin that is pegged to one US dollar. So they'll come along and they will put in their ADA. And in return, they're going to get a JED token that is worth one US dollars. Now, the way that works is if at a later point in time, they come back to the JED contract, they should always be able to exchange that JED token for one US dollars worth of ADA. So there's two important things there. One is always be able to exchange it. So the JED contract has to guarantee it. Um, otherwise, people would lose faith in the JED contract. So how do you have a contract where people are confident they can always redeem their token and, and get back one dollars worth of ADA? That is an important point of an algorithmic stablecoin. And the second bit is one dollar's worth. So you're not getting back an actual dollar, an actual US dollar. You're getting back however many ADA tokens makes up one US dollar. So if ADA was worth one dollar on the day that you're redeeming it, then you're going to get back one ADA. If ADA was worth two dollars, on the day that you're redeeming your JED token, you're going to get back 0.5 ADA. And if ADA plummeted to 0.5 US dollars, so it decreased in price, um, then on the day that you're redeeming it, you're going to get back 2 ADA, 0.5 times 2. So you see how the price of ADA governs just how much ADA you get back 
but the JED contract has to give you that assurance that you're always going to get back enough ADA to make up one US dollar, regardless of how much ADA you put in 10 days ago, a year ago, and so on. Or I should say, regardless of the price that ADA was at, at the point that you exchanged it for the JED tokens. So how does a JED contract make that guarantee? Well, that's where the liquidity providers come in, and that's why you have the liquidity providers providing their ADA. They're saying, here's, I don't know, a million dollars worth of ADA, and I'm coming along on the right-hand side, and I'm changing my 20 dollars worth of ADA and I'm getting back stable coins and I'm pretty confident that whatever time in the future I go back to the JED contract if the price of ADA has plummeted the contract can still give me one US dollars worth of ADA because it can tap into this liquidity providers ADA if it has to. So liquidity providers are your guarantors uh, for this contract and the contract will dip into their savings to pay you. Okay, so that's essentially how an algorithmic stablecoin works. I'm going to go into a bit more detail in the next slide, but if you were looking for a very, very basic explanation, that's essentially it. Now, just how much ADA do you need to have in your reserves to be able to always back up all your JED tokens, regardless of the price of ADA? That is the topic I'm going to cover next. Okay. So we talked about reserve coin holders putting in their ADA and the stable coin holders exchanging their ADA for stable coins knowing that it's backed up by the reserve coin holders ADA. So if you imagine the JED contract at any point in time, the JED contract has got a certain number of JED tokens outstanding out there in the world. And it needs to guarantee that even if every single JED token holder came running to cash in their JED token on the same day, it would still be able to pay out every JED token the equivalent of $1 worth of ADA. So that payout is what's known as its liabilities. And that liability will change over time depending on the price of ADA, depending on just how valuable the ADA is collected in its treasure box is. If the stable coin, if the people on the right hand side came along and they swapped their ADA for stable coins, and then two months later, when they came back again, the price of ADA had quadrupled. Then the treasure box, known as the JED contract, would find it very easy to pay them out and it would still have a lot of ADA remaining. In other words, the JED contract has actually made a profit as a result of these uh, stablecoin holders who didn't want to take the risk of holding ADA because they were worried about the price going up and down, they were getting a bit scared. So they came along and they gave the ADA to the treasure box. The treasure box said, don't you worry about it, I'll hold on to it. I'll give you one dollar's worth, uh, or I'll give you a stable coin known as Jed, and I'll hold on to your valuable ADA. And now they've come back two months later saying, wait a minute, the price of ADA has gone up to two dollars. Well, the treasure box will say, well, here's your one dollar's worth of ADA, okay, I'm keeping the rest. That's how the Jed contract will then make money. And that leftover amount, that of money, the profit that it's made, is what's known as equity. So that's what we've got on the left hand side here, the liabilities and equity. So at any given moment in time, there will be this concept of here's how much liabilities there are, how much that would have to be paid out if every single JED stablecoin holder came running at, on the same day. And here's what's left over, the equity. And that might be in profit if ADA has gone up, or it might be at a loss uh, for the reserve coin holders if ADA has gone down. Remember that the reserve coin holders get a claim on whatever is in the equity portion of this treasure chest. So they're like the shareholders. So that equity will be divided if all of the reserve coin holders came running uh, on the same day as well. The JED contract would pay out the liabilities to the stable coin holders. That's done. That's out the way. It will then look at the equity, the leftover amount it's got remaining and it would pay out all of the 
reserve coin holders uh, you know, based on how much reserve coins they hold. So they all get a share of the of the what's left over. Now, in reality, you don't want everybody coming on the same day. That would represent some sort of panic in the market if that ever were to, to happen. Um, but the amount of equity you need to be able to cover the chance that ADA might drop in price and therefore your liabilities will increase, um, that is what's known as a reserve ratio. So here, for example, just visually looking at it, I can say the equity seems to be about three times the size of the liabilities. So that would mean a reserve ratio of 300%. Um, the equity has to be three times as large as the liabilities. I should add the other way reserve coin holders make profit is through transaction fees. So any time there is movement in or out of the contract, uh, a transaction fee is charged and a portion of that goes back into the treasure box. So the, the, the pie grows for the reserve coin holders. And I think I saw the Coty CEO say that he expects those transaction fees to be quite significant uh, given how well known Cardano is. But essentially, the more that Jed is used, the more fees are accrued and the bigger the pie for the reserve coin holders. Um, but that reserve ratio is very, very important. If the price of ADA drops so far, like let's say close to zero, then you will reach a point where no matter what equity you have, in your treasure chest, you actually cannot uh, pay off your liabilities. Um, and from what I've read of the Jed white paper, um, in the unfortunate event that actually happens, I believe the Jed um, stable, stable coin holders would get refunded by way of reserve coin tokens. So that's what's described here as a debt for equity swap in the Jed white paper. Um, but generally, one would hope that it never reaches that level, that ADA doesn't crash quite that low. Um, one would hope that the reserve ratio is set at a point where there will always be enough equity to cope with the majority of pi price swings that one might expect um, around ADA. Um, and so a lot of this Jed white paper goes into detail about different algorithmic mechanisms to try and ensure that the reserve ratio is it sort of doesn't get breached. Um, and you can read about it, it's kind of out of the scope of, the, of this video. But I will point out that there is such a thing as minimal JED versus extended JED. So minimal JED is essentially what I just described with a few extra sort of bells and whistles to control the reserve ratio and make sure it doesn't get breached. Um, but this concept of an algorithm, algorithmic stablecoin did get piloted in the Ergo ecosystem um, in the form of the SIG USD stablecoin. And that stablecoin was actually gamed so that reserve coin holders, the liquidity providers, ended up losing out. So if you want to read about that, you can just Google SIG USD whale attack, I think. In fact, here you go. It was known as the Bear Whales Saga. So if you Google that, you can read all about um, how SIGUSD initially suffered from various attacks and they created iterative improvements on SIGUSD. Those iterative improvements is essentially what is the extended uh, JED. So issues to do with minimal JED is this uh, reserve draining attack and various other things. And then extended JED, the paper goes into a whole bunch of details on how they can control for those for those weaknesses and improve upon it. Um, and I'm not sure at this stage whether the JED that's being uh, built by Coty, whether that is the simple or the extended JED. It would be good to know that. So that's it for my simple overview of the JED contract. Hopefully now you see why I said JED is like a liquidity pool in which one side, the left hand side, is forced to buy and sell JED at a fixed price. So the left hand side will always guarantee your JED tokens. And I deliberately use the word forced to say that there's a potential negative connotation there. A reserve coin holder, so a holder of Shen, carries some risk from doing so if the price of ADA were to fall. And if the contract isn't designed well, then you could also have this reserve draining attacks like we saw on the SIG USD because of the fact the contract forces them to swap their ADA for a JED stablecoin should the stablecoin 
holder want to redeem it. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up or leave a comment down below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. You might also want to follow me along on Twitter if you want to keep up to date on my daily ramblings. Other than that, I hope you all have a great day.